pretty exciting evening. A couple of moments ago, a new patch just dropped. I want to talk you guys through it because it's actually a lot bigger than I was expecting. So opening up before we get to the juicy stuff in the title and really get into the nitty gritty of this. Uh, obviously, we're coming out of the back of the new Living World update. Don't worry, I won't spoil any of that. And people have been doing a ton of stuff in game because of the new mount. It requires a lot of playthrough, a lot of game time with all the existing Living World episodes. So the game feels like it's in a really good state for PvE right now in terms of activity and the amount of people that are doing things. And we also knew that there was going to be this meta event madness bonus weekend thing coming up soon where they removed the daily caps on meta events. When they gave us that blog post, and I did a video on it already, they mentioned that there would be changes to the Path of Fire metas. Well, this patch, this is the changes that they've gone with. And so we can see whether uh, going forward, this expansion's maps will finally feel really popular, really worthwhile doing. We'll be doing the treasure, of, uh, treasure hunt event. How many times have you guys done that? We'll be doing more than just the casino. We'll be doing the Realm of Torment Desolation entrance meta, hopefully. The Vabby stuff more regularly. This is a big patch for that. I will also say, if you look, or just as I logged in and this video started, on the top left, I was getting a prompt telling me I have equipped items with their stats unselected. Now, the reason for that, and if you look at all my trinkets here, well, not all of them, a lot of the trinkets here, you'll see that their stats have changed to not be assigned anymore. The game's just gone through a big update. There was another blog post discussing. Now, I never made a video on this one, but essentially they've said that wherever there was gear that was stat-selectable items, they're kind of expanding it now so that you can pick whatever stats you simply have unlocked on your account based on the number of expansions you own. I think it's a long-term project that they've got in mind considering adding lots more expansions to Guild Wars 2 and having everything intuitive and make sense. Because as the game existed right before this patch this evening, it could be a bit confusing knowing what stats would come off of what item and whatnot. So there's a whole thing about that. I didn't feel it was interesting enough to do a whole video, but we can go over it with the patch notes now. So let's jump in and there's numerous new items. Items. There's going to be lots of economy changes here and of course all big stuff for Path of Fire. In fact, let's go to uh, the Highlands and see where, maybe whether the treasure event meta is up while we uh, look through the notes here and see what we can do. I'm actually really excited to try out some of this content because I haven't played a lot of it since, you know, the expansion first came out and I did some videos with you guys. So let's head on over. Now, you can see here, May 28th, right towards the end of the month. Uh, the big thing at the header is this. Yeah, it was in the title. There's a new legendary trinket in the game. Now, I know we've been thinking about the legendary ring for a long time now. Ever since the Underworld uh, raid release, we've been uh, having our eye on this. So if we go to collections, legendary trinkets here, you've got Coalescence. I still haven't even made much uh, progress on. Uh, this is seems to be to do with a raid and this ring is you know We'll build the hateful swell is still in progress because we're expecting it to be concluded on the next raid release when that ever, Whenever that is however, what about a regular trinket? What about like Aurora if you remember the last living world season ended with Aurora that thing was really cool Why did this season not end with something similar? Well the argument was well hey, it's the sky scale There's lots of reason to go back to those old maps and stuff because the sky scale is kind of the replacement turns out not They've just slipped this in. As far as I know, and I could be out of the loop on this, there wasn't any hint or suggestion a new legendary would be getting added to the game this patch. That means we had Exordium just two weeks ago, the last greatsword, and now a whole new thing as well. So the number of things people have to work on in game now is massive, especially if they get a raid release out in like the next two weeks or so. It's going to be insane with the uh, bonus weekends going on too. Crazy. Let's read what they say. They say, Heroes of Tyria, relive your journey in guiding Aurene to fulfill her destiny and witness the past through a new lens in order to craft the legendary trinket vision. To begin your journey toward enlightenment, purchase a trance stone from any volatile magic vendor in a season four map. And note... Parts of this collection require acquisition and mastery of the Sky Scale, as well as access to each Living World Season 4 episode. So this is your Season 4 Legendary, just as Aurora was the Season 3 Legendary. It did so much for the game. As far as I know, no one knows what this looks like, what kind of effect it will have. Aurora had those orbiting purple globs around you. It sounds very fun to me, and... It even ties into the Sky Scale in a way. Sky Scale alone asks you to have lots of the episodes. And now, you know, you've got this on top. You've got the truly prestige thing afterwards. I'm really keen to see this. You guys can expect a video. As a legendary, it's going to take a lot of time to acquire. But I'm well up for it. I still hope one day 
to have a character that is pure ascended and pure legendary. I guess we'll still need some legendary bags over these ascended ones. But all in good time, guys. All in good time. So, yeah, nice thing at the start. They also have some bug fixes written here. These aren't too interesting. Uh, a couple of story fixes for the Descent story instance in the most recent episode. This one's cool, though. Fix an issue in which the facet of Root and Madness was erroneously immune to condition damage. Now, if you saw my massive discussion on the most recent story, I pointed out I did that on a condition build, and it was a nightmare. Which is appropriate for Mordremoth, I felt, but obviously it was an issue, and it's nice to see that patch. So, World Polish. Here we go. The Path of Fire Metas. For consistency with their Heart of Thorns counterparts, the chest of the Bizarre Raider and the chest of the Forged Hunter have been renamed to the Domain of Abbey Hero's Choice Chest and the Desolation Hero's Choice Chest. Hero's Choice Chests have also been added as rewards for defeating the Doppelganger in the Path to Ascension meta event in the Ellen Riverlands and the Choya Pinata event in the Casino Blitz meta event in Crystal Oasis. So this is kind of cool. It means you're going to get a lot more stuff from doing the Casino Blitz. It surprises me that the devs even updated that one because that was the one meta you found people doing a lot. They had a really good reward structure in there with the novelties, so people would be spending their coins lots. There was the confetti infusion. I wake up most days and do this meta at a really odd hour in the morning, and there's players there doing it. Uh, but So this was like the one really decent meta I felt from the expansion, and even this one's getting those updates. Path of Fire Heroes choice chests are guaranteed to give three pieces of rare unidentified gear, an offering of one amalgamated gemstone replaces the choice that was previously a piece of rare and identified gear. And the chest will be available once per account per day. So this is just like with Heart of Thorns, where you can pick up that amalgamated at the end of the meta. This was one of the big community suggestions that they wanted the devs to do. Obviously, you've got incenses and stuff, which this patch note will go into in a big way in a second. But hopefully, that's a very, very, very good start of unifying how rewarded you feel for doing these metas as, as much as you would feel rewarded for doing the Heart of Thorns ones. So, all Path of Fire meta events now begin at consistent times. As you guys all know, some of the PF ones weren't on strict timers. Not like Heart of Thorns. Heart of Thorns did the strict timer thing and got a lot of criticism for it at release. Path of Fire, in so many ways, is what it is with its pretty much dead maps because it's in response to the Heart of Thorns complaints that, you know, things were on strict timers and that felt like a deviation from core or whatever. And so they did this expansion. They swung the pe pendulum the other way. And I think we've seen now, if anyone's followed this game for long enough, you've seen that probably the grass was not greener with Path of Fire. And so here, this is kind of an amazing patch note, guys, because it's kind of going back to something they were criticized for with Heart of Thorns. But I think they're going back to it with applause, right? Uh, you can obviously leave your thoughts in the comments and I'll legally read them as always. So, Casino is unchanged and I think that one was actually predictable. The search for buried treasure is unchanged. I think that that was predictable. The path to ascension now starts every two hours. Now, this one would like stall based on how well you did the escort or whatever and wouldn't necessarily fail, I think. The Moors of Torment now start at a specific time every two hours. Janundu Rising, I mean, you guys can pause and look at the exact times if you like. Or more realistically, when you're in game, Type slash wiki space ET and all the timers will come up for you. That wiki page is amazing. I've plugged it so many times in recent videos because it's great. And now it'll be updated with all of these. Brilliant. So they've doubled the drop rate of energy and mosaics from bounties uh, and the Path of Fire meta. So both. So there's actually two things at play here that I really want more of from Path of Fire. I want bounties to feel more rewarding and be more fun. Maybe they actually need some slight content tweaks. And the metas. I want both of them really. Um, because even bounties feel kind of like has been content almost to an extent to me. So it's nice to see they're improving the, the drop rate there too for the bounties. I don't know whether this will really bring them back. Obviously, a lot of this stuff will be remain to be seen. They've removed the daily purchase limit from Funerary Incense. Uh, and so I think this was... Now, I've never built a, a legendary weapon with the Path of Fire method. I've never done it. But it was t opposed to the Heart of Thorns one. It was pretty much time-gated, where I believe you had to go to different hearts and buy certain items. And I think it was these funerary incenses, but you could only get a certain cap every day. That's now gone. So those of you who had an idea of, I'm going to do this heart today, then this, then this, and this, tomorrow, repeat, tomorrow, repeat. And in like two weeks, I think it was, you could have a legendary weapon. Uh, that's not going to be the case anymore. As long as you've got the currency, you can spam them up, it sounds. Uh, they've added a new purchase option for funerary incense as well from the Primeval Steward. So the Steward is the guy that you can find up here in the Tomb of the Primeval Kings, where a lot of you you would spend a lot of those LG mosaics, and there were a ton of items you could get. A kind of a weird vendor without even an icon on the map, right? I've always felt he's a little bit of a strange guy. Uh, but he's now got a new option uh, for the funerary incense. 
and it's asking for 100 desert trade contracts, an amalgamated, which remember you're getting from the metas now, an obsidian shard and ecto. So these hopefully most players have in abundance. And the trade contracts, 100 might sound like a lot, but if we look in game at my currencies, uh, let's see, trade contracts, I'm at like 12,000, is it? I've got 10,000 of the goddamn things. So if you're anything like me, and this is just from PvP, I, this is hardly doing bounties and stuff. So if you're anything like me, this could be a really positive change in that you'll be able to snowball these up very quickly and maybe even, you know, acquire vision very fast using this new method. Um, if you find it efficient for how your account is set up at the moment. I'm guessing they've made the trinkets cheaper here uh, because that's in line with the ideals of the update and they were very pricey. Reduce the purchase cost of the Spirit of the Raptor, Spirit of Springer, Skimmer, and Spirit uh, by 25%. Again, this was to do with making a legendary through Path of Fire only. Now, music boxes. This is cool. You guys might not even remember these. So, <laughs> let's go back. It's not just bounties and it's not just metas in the expansion. The expansion had a lot of really rich and cool content. The problem was always just the rewards with it. There's another feature, the Buried Treasure feature. This is a really fun idea for the expansion, kind of a nod back to Guild Wars 1, Nightfall Areas, if I remember rightly. Uh, it's the idea you'd get the treasure hunting kit on these maps. You could double click it, trigger yourself a special action hotkey, and it would guide you to treasures that you can dig up for loot. A cool idea, but again, the rewards just weren't in a place to encourage people to do it that much. Well, from that feature, there were some exclusive of items that could drop and they can come from meta events but they're really rare uh, they're music boxes now so here you see Tanari's music box, Kadri's music box, Hafez's and so on they've been there since Path of Fire came out but uh, they weren't tradable so they're just like the super adventure box boom box here you hold them they play some music apparently they're really nice I've never even seen a player with them and no one talks about them because not only are they very rare drops from metas and this treasure hunting and I think most prominently the treasure hunting uh, you couldn't trade them, so no one would even talk about it as like these hyper rare items like treasure mushroom boots. Nobody really cares that much about the invisible shoes from treasure mushrooms, but because they're tradable, that means that they're exciting and everyone knows. Well, what about the, the Path of Fire music boxes? A rare feature, and this patch, they all now drop in tradable containers. So when you get them, you might be able to make a good amount of money. I don't know how much, because the next patch note does say that they've also increased the drop rate of these boxes from all their sources. So it might be that they're not even worth that much because they're dropping everywhere. Hopefully the devs have been careful with it though and there's some excitement to that. As someone who's trying to get all the novelties and everything unlocked on the account, I think uh, I'm pretty happy to see that dropping a bit higher. They also lastly here say as general stuff for just the expansion, they've significantly increased the drop rate of War Beast armor recipes from Path of Fire meta events. Now War Beast stuff is probably the rarest uh, armor set to come from this x pack. I have a warrior on my account. I often wear war beast on whenever I do a video and I'm in the war beast stuff You guys are saying oh, what's that armor? What's that armor because you really like the look of it? It does look brilliant on heavy and I remember when I got war beast There were maybe 40 people in the entire game who had it again It's one of these sets that's really easy to get through reward tracks, but actually within PvE it was a little bit more challenging uh, Now it sounds like they've rounded that out. So it's kind of like look there was a lot of content in path of fire You probably didn't know about probably didn't interact with much now Hopefully you have incentive and reason enough to do that So then they dig into the specific maps and I'll be a bit quicker with this section But let's roll through so the domain of Vabi probably the least ran meta increase rewards for all events in Serpent's Eye That's the name of the meta event uh, reduce the base amount of control effects required to break the break bars. This was the thing that caused everyone to fail uh, all the time by 33%. Reduce the defense bar scale, defiance bar scaling of the branded forgotten zealots by 50%. Increase the cooldown before the defiance bars of branded forgotten zealots are active again from 10 to 30 seconds. So basically, they've made it easier and less of a gamble to spend your time on this and only for it to fail. Next, they have this patch note where they explain that they're moving the champion loot boxes from dropping from the enemies themselves to a chest at the end. And the reason for this is because there was kind of an unhealthy situation where players who were doing the meta were encouraged to zerg in a big circle and tag all of the champions so they'd get all the, the boxes instead of truly helping out. You know, they'd scale it up but not contribute enough. So they're fixing that. Uh, some of the health has been changed. Here they say simply increase the rewards in the chest drop by the legendary Forge Hounds. And then also here, significantly increase the drop rate of the mini air gin, fire gin, water gin, and earth gin from the, the uh, Grand Elder event. Now that's not necessarily attached to the meta as far as I know. These minis were really rare, <laughs> like super rare. In fact, I was looking at the wiki page before shooting this video of you guys, and I'm pretty sure like one of them had never been on the trading post, unless I'm reading it wrong. Nuts, and they mentioned them a bit later as well, so. And these minis are a little bit more available. Uh, next, we've got the Alan Riverlands. So they've increased the rewards for the Path to Ascension meta event. 
Uh, this is probably my favorite meta in the expansion, just because it's such a cool, iconic place, right? Going into Augury Rock. The chest awarded for de defeating Joso, that's the boss within Augury Rock, can now be looted once per character per day, instead of once per account per day. I've never been a person that swaps character to character to character to grind a meta in this way, but I suppose they're throwing a bone to people who do that. Uh, and then lastly, they've got something to do with another mini, and it's a bounty mini. So this is the mini Mordant Crescent from the legendary Zelen Ossa. Now, if I go in game very briefly, and we have a look. So, Mini Mordant Crescent. Let's see what it's worth on the TP. Okay, so right now, it's at 2,000 gold. And that might have just dropped because the patch just came out, so people are panic selling. There are some minis in POF, like those gin, I guess, that I just mentioned. But uh, that are worth a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, the Mini uh, Abomination, uh, maybe it's the Mini Awakened... Here you go. Mini Awakened Abomination. This guy was sitting at like 10,000 gold at one point. Absolutely crazy. Uh, he's still at 4,500. And the situations we have with these minis, obviously the buy prices are a lot lower than what people are selling. But the fact is only three players have, have got one right now and are willing to sell it. That's why there's such a, a control over this market. Uh, well, this patch is looking at these as well. So these will be a little bit more available. This is the first one, the Mini Modern Crescent you'll see on the others. Uh, Desolation, the Hero's Choice Chest is uh, now available. Uh, for completing the Janundu Rising meta event. Uh, significant. So there's actually two metas, I guess, on this map now. Because Janundu Rising is not the same as the Close the Portal one. Significantly increased the drop rate of the Janundu Worm. Another rare one. And the Awakened Abomination. Desert Highlands. So this is the Treasure Hunt meta. Not the same as the music box thing I was talking about. But similar. While the Search for Buried Treasure meta event is active. The Treasure Hunting Kits will attempt to reveal treasure that is not extremely far away when possible. This may result in a short delay before... Before the special action skill becomes active. So I guess I never did this uh, enough. But my reading of this is that it was really annoying sometimes. Sending you a mile away to get some treasure when there was some much closer. It will try to be more efficient. After players opened buried treasure while in the search. Uh, their special action skill will automatically refresh. If they have additional treasure hunting kits in their inventory. So just a little bit of quality of life. Reduction of tedium. Improve the visibility of the scan indicators. Improve the drop rate of Harriers and Marshall recipes. Added a rare chance to obtain the mini air gin, fire gin, water gin, and earth gin from the superior ch chests. And they fixed a bug in which the meta event erroneously referred to explorer notes instead of treasure hunting kits. So this one is, uh, this one here especially, as much as there's just loot changes for the others, this one's actually had some tweaks as well to make it feel a little bit better to play. The Crystal Oasis added Elegy Mosaics as a reward for defeating the Choya Pinata. So, we already heard that there's a Hero's Choice Chest coming from the Casino event now. Well, if you do the bonus round, you can even get Elegy Mosaics from that too, which is incredible. I liked the idea of the Mosaics being very clearly like from Bounties and other currencies being from the Metas, but getting it all at once hopefully won't detract the two systems. It will still work well. Uh, and so there you go. That is the Path of Fire meta changes that they've done. Uh, obviously the value of these items and exactly what they mean when they say increase the drop rate or doubled the drop rate We'll have to get in game and see how rewarding they feel But it's definitely going to be a focus of mine and uh, hopefully we'll see how that goes L Moving further forward, we do have some other changes in general areas of the game So the new map Dragonfall uh, where they swapped some of the champ bags I'm not sure why maybe the kind of items you get out of them was important or it was just a theming thing. Maybe you guys can fill me in in the comments. Fix an issue in which escort events could stall out of bridges. Fix an issue with the Dragon's Blood Spear special action remaining after the meta event was done when it shouldn't have. And finally rounding out with a little bit on Frostgorge Sound. This is actually to do with acquiring the Sky Scale. Which asks you to fight the Claw of Jormag at one moment. Or go to Bitterfrost Frontier. And you are asked to be encased in ice. And it's they say that will not happen even on defeat. And so, uh, yeah, this stops people who would otherwise have missed out on it uh, due to unfortunate circumstances still getting it. Because that would feel pretty horrible. The Claw of Jaw Mag's on a massive cooldown. And if you miss it and you can only play for a few hours a day, then that would be pretty lame. All right, so this next section is on items. Now, the vast majority of it is to do with what I talked about at the head of the video with the stat selection. But there's also some new and really cryptic stuff at the bottom. So, starting at the top here, they explain the majority of attribute selectable equipment in the game has been updated to include all stats available to your account based on the expansion you own. So, it's a lot clearer now. But then they have this. They say that legendary equipment has all stats available regardless of expansion ownership. So what does this mean? This means if you only have a Heart of Thorns account and you grind out some legendaries, you can get some Path of Fire stats. 
And when we, you know, they've just announced another new legendary trinket here. Eventually, you can have full legendary gear and thus stats for expansions you don't own. Like two expansions down the line. That's kind of crazy. And then they say there are some ex exceptions to this. Um, the fact that everything will be stat selectable for your account uh, based on your expansions. Crafting backpacks won't do it. The specialization gear you get, you know, when you're building your weapon specifically for your hollow, that will only ever have those designated things on there. And attribute combinations related to raids and fractals. So the assault is defenders, healers, and malicious system they have for fractals and raids. That's staying the same generally, but with some slight tweaks, which is what they say here. These have been adjusted. The goal of this change is to make it more obvious which stats will be available for each prefix family. Stats available on gear with assaulters will now always have either power or ferocity as a primary stat, although no stat combination with ferocity as the primary attribute currently exists. That's a cool hint that maybe in a future expansion we'll have a ferocity main thing. Or, if they don't have that as a major, then they'll have two secondary stats that support a power DPS placer. So like crit damage and whatever, and crit chance. Defender's gear, likewise, will always have either toughness or vitality as primary, or they'll have both as secondary. Healers is going to be healing power and concentration as primary, or both as secondary. And Malicious will have the requirement of condition damage or expertise as a main stat, or having both of them as a secondary stat. Celestial gear has been added to Assaulters, so it's available everywhere. No matter what box you pick up, you can get Celestial. So this results in the following changes. You guys can pause the video if you like, but... Basically, Assaulters has got a lot of extra stuff on it now. And weirdly, you know, like Sinisters and Vipers, these are condition damage sets. But they're under Assaulters now because they also have power and precision on them, right? So there they are. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, what they've done with these. They also go on to say that Raiders Chests, which are uncommon rewards from Fractals of the Mist daily achievements, have been renamed to Assaulters Chests of Armor Type for consistency across the game modes. And again, for Fractals, all these chests of Ascended Armor that you get as uncommon rewards from the daily achievement in Fractals now contain a choice of heavy, medium, and light stat selectable armor that uses the same stat selector as raids with the same prefix. This change is retroactive and will affect any existing boxes currently in players' inventories. If that seems very wordy and you've lost a bit of my commentary here, don't worry. They're just basically making all the terminology and everything sync up and be uh, organized and coherent. Uh, next, chest containing ascended equipment. Uh, is now stackable. This is pretty huge. A lot of people I know and myself in the past when I've played a lot of this stuff have just had whole bank tabs filled with these chests stacking together. But now they're stackable. That's pretty good. Uh, even more inventory useful stuff. And maybe this has got something to do with the build template thing they talked about in a previous uh, blog post a while ago, you know. These are just extra changes and things that they kind of want to get in place that then build templates will be able to sit on top, right? You need consistency of naming and how all these boxes and things work. Ascended accessories from the Spirit Veil, Salvation Pass, and Stronghold of the Faithful Raid Wings will now include the appropriate Assaulters, Defenders, Healers, or Malicious Prefixes in their item names to make it more readily apparent what stats are available on them. So, this is stuff like... When you killed the Keep Construct, you could get like a rounded rubble, and that would be like the Defender's Trinket. Or you could get some pointy rubble, and that would be like the Assaulter's. And it was kind of flavorful, but I guess they've, they've tweaked that to make it more obvious. Alright, all of that, here's the cryptic fun stuff. Check it out. A new item, the Ectoplasmic Stone, is available for purchase from Miani in Lion's Arch. This item functions like the Mystic Forge Stone, and gives a chance to receive new rewards from the Mystic Forge. So, so the stone is like a filler ingredient, if you guys don't know. If you were rolling in the forge trying to get exotics by throwing rares into it, instead of throwing four rare items in, which would give you probably a rare back but a chance at exotic, you could throw three items in and a stone. Like a stone is like a bit of filler. It's a bit of padding. You can always fill, replace one of the slots with a stone instead. And it's a nice idea for the forge. Uh, well, now there's a new type of stone. It's the ectoplasmic one. And by using the new one, you're unlocking totally new stuff that could come out. What is the new stuff? Well, they haven't said. And in fact, there was a cryptic message from one of the devs a long time ago suggesting there are some Mystic Forge recipes the player base still has not discovered or crafted. That's before this update. And now it seems there's even more. To go further with it, uh, they talk as well at the last note that a researcher has begun investigations into new Mystic Forge secrets. This is cool and something they played with in the earliest days, 2012, 2013. There was 
was an update with the sand glass, the hourglass, I think, in one of the season two updates. And we haven't seen them do enough of it recently. I think every patch should add new hidden stuff in the Mystic Forge, and people should get really excited about finding them. Well, here you have it. They're doing a bit more. In fact, hold on. When Heart of Thorns came out, we did have Night Fury added secretly to the Forge, and that was a really exciting time. Uh, finally, they also say treasure hunting kits may now be used while in combat. That's actually related to stuff all the way up here, but it's an item, so it comes here. So that's uh, the vast majority of the patch, guys. Quite a big one, right? They do have a tiny bit on balance, just a little. And funnily enough, this leads me into some speculation about a future expansion. So let's see what we got. First, the Avatar of Melanju, elite racial skill for humans. Binding roots. Fixed a bug that prevented this skill from inflicting bleeding. They've clarified the tooltip lit to list duration rather than pulses. And the skill has been updated so that instead of inflicting 8 seconds of bleeding and 3 seconds of immobilize all at once, it will now inflict 4 seconds of bleeding and 1.5 and seconds of immobilize 4 times. So it pulses now, I guess is the idea. Doesn't that add to Condi Thief synergy on that? I don't know why this has happened. Maybe people can explain elsewhere. Uh, then we also have Ranger. And this is the really fun one. Ranger's shouts have been significantly different from what standard shouts are, as they've largely been about focused on interplay with your pet rather than bolstering your allies. As such, a range of shout skills have been reclassified. So remember how gyros were reclassified to wells on Scrapper recently? Well, here, this is happening with Ranger. Rangers no longer have shouts. They are now called command skills. They're keeping their voice callouts and all their pre-existing functionality, but they won't be affected by the rune of the trooper. So that's, some of you might know that as soldier rune. It's cleanse whenever you use a shout. Or reaper, which is when, whenever you use a shout, you inflict chill around you. Neither of these were particularly good with ranger anyway. So I don't think anyone's going to be sad about this. Uh, maybe a bit on the trooper side. And down here, they say uh, the trait as well is now affecting command skills rather than shout skills. This is what regen and uh, swiftness every time you use a shout. Uh, so that's changed. So rangers now get commands. You might wonder, well, what motivates ArenaNet to do that? Is that really important? I'm wondering if some new upcoming elite spec, what if Warrior gets Paragon and as a Paragon, they get commands or something. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. But what would the Warrior be commanding around? I don't know. But uh, that's kind of fun. And it also leaves them now with the opportunity to reintroduce shouts to the Ranger later down the road, uh, which will be funny to see. They round out with Black Lion stuff. Do you remember that they did that sort of season package thing before where you buy it and then every week leading up to the most recent release, you've got new stuff? I think they're doing a similar thing here. They've got this season four expedition contract uh, for a thousand gems. They did a tweet and a mini little uh, video about this. The Black Lion expedition boards as well, which is you log in, you get more loot each time. They've updated it. And a couple of bug fixes on a couple of the items. Stellar weapons were removed from guaranteed wardrobe unlocks. Which I think is a really good move. Stellar stuff is really difficult to get and really important with currency. And then people were bypassing the whole thing with automatic unlockers. So, uh, and I, this is one of those sets I've been working on really hard in this set for a long time. So the fact that they removed that, I'm actually kind of all right with there. Uh, so there you have it. Big patch, guys. Lots of stuff with the metas. I'm doing this in the very first couple of hours. So we don't know how effectual this stuff will be. And as the hours go by, please come back to this video and drop in the comments your thoughts and feelings about it. And I can feed that into my next video on the topic. So that should be pretty fun. I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, I'll see you later. Maybe I'll try and get myself one of these.